Hi, my name is Byron Martin here at Logis Greenhouses, and today we're going to be talking about jasmines, in particular the sandbacks. Within the sandback uh, group, there are many, many cultivars. Uh, we have five of them here that we grow at Logis. They're quite easy to grow, and they are probably some of the freest flowering ones, particularly the made of Orleans, but many of them are very free flowering and they carry a very strong jasmine fragrance, particularly at night. As I mentioned, the most famous of them all is the Maid of Orleans, which is uh, this here, and you can see how prolific the flowering is on it. That is probably the freest flowering of all within the group. One of the things about growing this plant in particular is that it flowers always off of the new shoots, as they all do, but this one, every little spur a flower will come off of. So in culturing it, they really like to be pruned. And in that case, we just simply shear back any long leads that are coming off the plant and it immediately goes back into growth and flowers form on that new growth. Um, all of them have that tendency. The flowers always form on the new growth, but some of them uh, tend to be a little more um, uh, upright in their growth. This is Grand Duke. There are several forms of Grand Duke. This is one selection that is more common in the trade. It's a lot easier to flower and propagate than some of the others. You can see the flowers are very double, um, almost like carnations. Um, this one actually is starting to crest, meaning it's getting a thick sort of a sideways growth to it. Um, this particular variety, all of them can be used as tea, but this particular one is often, the flowers are picked in the evening and put into water in the refrigerator overnight, and in the morning you drink jasmine water, but all of them can be used that way. Grand Duke is one that's um, often used for that. This has a very upright habit to it. You can see these leads are running up and they will go, continue to go up until they get to a point where they flower. In terms of culturing of them, if they get too long, just prune them back. I mean, they, it can re, it's a plant that can actually get out of hand. It doesn't have as much uh, vigor in, ter in terms of um, growing throughout the season as, the, as made of Orleans does. So it's more of a warm day um, uh, bloomer than it is uh, wintertime. We very seldom see flowers in the wintertime here in Northeastern Connecticut. Um, within that group, there's also um, another double. This is sort of almost the, the difference between the two. This is one we call Flora Pleaner. It has a semi-double to double flower to it, a little bit looser than Grand Duke. Um, an upright habit, but it does flower very freely. It is a more of a summer bloomer for us, but it does flower a little bit freer than Grand Duke. One other cultivar that we grow is called Bell of India. This is... Um, a double form. You can see it's very, very loose in its growth. This is probably, um, I wouldn't say weakest, but it tends to be more seasonal than any of the others. It really doesn't like winter time here in the north and pretty much slows down on us to a crawl or stops growing um, even under warm conditions. And then in the summertime it grows very vigorously. But you can see it has kind of a outreaching habit to it, it kind of um, more vining than um, some of the others. In terms of culture, uh, they do have some issues with root disease, so one needs to make sure that there's some dryness between waterings. They're highly susceptible to spider mite, and that's probably the biggest challenge in growing them. You've got to really keep your eye on that. When you see that little puckering mark on the leaf, you need to uh, make sure you um, uh, treat them and take care of that. And the neem oil works very well in terms of controlling that, but you just got to stay ahead of that. As far as pruning goes, um, this would be a good example, we could prune this back, but um, you just you simply need to take these, regardless of the variety, once it's done its flowering cycle, there's some flowers that have finished blooming here, and simply um, just chop the, the plant back so that it's headed down like so. And then this is all going to, um, this is all going to break and it will um, fill out again. And you're going to, every time you do that, as you prune most plants, you're going to thicken it. So that creates a uh, fuller specimen over time. And it also, you can contain it. Um, you could certainly take a um, jasmine uh, made of Orleans like this and you could hold it at, I don't know, maybe a foot and a half tall permanently just by pruning off, letting it grow, pruning off, letting it grow. Um, so it can fit on a windowsill or in a limited space if needed. 
As far as fertilizer goes, they do benefit from fertilizer. We feed them on a pretty much a continuous basis throughout the year, as long as temperatures are um, above 60 degrees, where we grow most of our jasmines. Um, any balanced feed will work. You can use a liquid feed or you can um, top dress if, ne if needed with organics or granular uh, slow release. There are some issues in the wintertime with iron chlorosis, that's intravenal lightness, yellowing of the top growth, that's usually an iron problem. Um, generally it's more of a seasonal thing. You can ignore it and they'll grow out of it or um, if you want you can treat with iron chelate and um, that usually corrects the problem. As I mentioned, there can be some issues with root disease on these plants, uh, particularly in cold, wet conditions. Um, jasmine um, bell of India tends to be more susceptible than the other varieties that we grow. So thank you for watching today. There's a little bit of information on one of the easiest jasmines to grow, the jasmine sandbacks, and the most rewarding. If you'd like more information, you can find us at logis.com.